everybody. Welcome to People of Interest. I'm your host, Ryan T. Barlow. Thank you so much for being here. And happy holidays to those of you who celebrate holidays. Um, <clears throat> if you're uh, just joining us for the first time or would like a bit of a refresher, let me tell you a little bit about People of Interest. So I've come up with the descriptions for three very interesting characters. And it, waiting behind the scenes are three very interesting performers who are going to perform those characters. The catch is they have no idea what I've written and they're not going to find out until I'm reading them the descriptions to you, the audience. And it's a lot of fun, but I don't need to tell you that. That's why you're here. So uh, who are the performers tonight? Let's find out. We've got Sue Jahani, Amanda Nicastro, and Steve Kleinedler, who are all just top-notch performers. I mean, they're just, they're just dynamite. I wouldn't have them on the show if they weren't great. So this is, this is my, my quality guarantee to you, the audience, that these guys are, these guys are pretty good. So, again, thank you so much for being here, and uh, it's time to start the show, but as always, before we get started, here are today's headlines. Good evening. I'm Neil Bardham. It's 50 degrees in South Philly, and it feels incredible to not have to cover horrendously bleak yet incredibly bananas news with you for once. Instead, we can return to covering the normal bananas news. Imagine if I actually covered news about bananas. Hmm. <clears throat> A number of federal and state entities have been investigating Facebook for violating antitrust laws. You've probably already forgotten that the company bought Instagram in 2012 and WhatsApp in 2014, making it an $800 billion corporation filled with vertical integration and your Uncle Harry's memes about the Democratic Party. In a strange bipartisan twist, both the present government and the incoming Biden administration have vowed to take on the power these tech behemoths have. While many are looking at the economic implications of the mergers and acquisitions, the real crime is that anybody trusted Facebook with their personal information for the past 15 years. In Belgium, a Hungarian politician by the name of name of Josef Shire, has admitted that he had attended an all-male sex party that violated local pandemic restrictions. The member of European Parliament literally was found red-handed, covered in his own blood, with a bag full of narcotics. Shire not only is notorious for his conservative, homophobic legislation, he is also known for his hypocrisy, his endurance behind closed doors, and his ability to find the cleanest MDMA in Brussels. Finally, in Philadelphia news, a member of the University of Pennsylvania faculty has a red hand of his own. Orkin Telhan has created a lab manufactured steak based on human cells, thus creating a controversy over what counts as cannibalism. Most interestingly, the pseudo human meat has existed since 2019 when it debuted at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Only now that it has crossed the Atlantic to a London based show have critics spoken out against it. Once again, we've proven that somehow the Brits have no sense of gastronomic taste, even when it comes to human flesh. Hmm. That's all the news we care to comment on, and I've avoided saying a particular American politician's name this month, so good job me at writing this thing. For POI News, good night. Russell Stover supports people of interest. You know how in every Russell Stover box of chocolate, we always have a handful of those weird strawberry or raspberry nougat things that taste like cough medicine covered in chocolate? Well, guess what? Our market research tells us that enough people actually like the taste of them that it remains commercially viable to keep putting them in there. We're as surprised as you are. Those of you out there who have the holiday spirit year round probably follow my next guest on Instagram. Mrs. Claus, the wife of the legendary gift giver Santa Claus, provides wholesome festive updates from the North Pole on her Instagram page. Well, that is until last week when she posted a very provocative photo of herself in what is popularly known as a thirst trap. The photo was accompanied by a lengthy explanation of why she is back on the market and sporting a new look. 
Now, before you get too upset and worry that Christmas is canceled, Mrs. Claus has assured everyone that she and Santa are just on a break while she can find herself and also maybe find someone's daddy to kiss under the mistletoe, if you know what she means. Mrs. Claus joins us here tonight to discuss her relationship with Santa and why this break is more than just her turn to get her tree trimmed. Mrs. Claus, welcome. Oh, Mrs. Claus, I think you're on mute. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ryan, for having me on tonight. I apologize about that that mute snafu there. It's it's okay, you know. You're you're. It sounds like you're you're getting used to everything again. Kind of uh, getting back out there. I yeah, love I love the new. Look. Thank you, thank you. I got rid of the grays. I lost about 150 pounds, and I'm starting to sport the color black instead of red. Wonderful. Uh, so, so uh, tell us what what happened. What you know, everyone wants to know what 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 flipped the switch. You know, Santa and I have been married for hundreds of years now. Hundreds of years. Do you know how long hundreds of years is being married to someone? That's a long time. I've picked mm -hmm. Santa's towel up off of the floor, and I've asked him multiple times. I say, Chris Kringle. Please do not leave our towels on the floor. We have a towel rack. And he just he just ho ho hoes at me and then and then there's other times that he's just at the workshop all night long and he comes back smelling like peppermints and cookies and I say, "Why do you smell like peppermints and cookies?" And he has no valid excuse. He just says that he was tinkering all night and I what do you, I what what am I to do, you know? That, that's true. You know, uh, uh, so, I mean, the long hours have to be a factor, but uh, I think a lot of people have been speculating, you know, with songs like Santa Baby and I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, that uh, that perhaps there may have been some, some issues uh, regarding fidelity. A right ahead and you went where I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to drag Santa through the mud. You know, um, he's he's done so much for the boys and girls of this world, brought so much hope. But when it comes to being monogamous, Santa is not. He oh, is not. <laughs> oh, my. As, and he was. He was keeping this from you. Well, he was trying, but how many times can you hear? I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus before you have to question why does this song exist? Why do they play it on the radio multiple times? And why are so many people covering it? Not just one person, multiple people. It's true. And I sent it's, Intel it's... elves. I sent Intel oh. elves. Do you, you have your own elf squadron? Well, I have some friends. You know, when you're married for hundreds of years and you know you live in the same place and all of your neighbors are stuck in the north pole with you and you make the best gingerbread cookies you, you make friends so i had some elf intel and they confirmed um what mrs claus didn't want to hear so mrs claus has a brand new bag now what well, you know uh and great, you know, that's great. But, you know, to, when I was reading your Instagram post, it's not just about uh, uh, your relationship with Santa Claus, but it, it sounds like it's also a lot about finding yourself. Like, for instance, I could not find your first name. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a teacher. You never know Mrs. Claus's first name. But guess what? Maybe I won't be a Mrs. Claus for long and I'll have like a special like Instagram reveal of my name, you know, like a live shoot. Mrs. Claus's oh, name, wow. you know? Yeah. I mean, it, do you feel that, like, your your name should have been publicized? I mean, it's, it feels like kind of a slight, like, you're just the wife of Santa Claus. I mean, it, it feels, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel very progressive. Yes, no, I agree. I agree. I was someone before I was Mrs. Claus, and I just took it on. And I, I you know, if if Santa and I work this out, I think I'm going to start going by my maiden name again. Oh, uh, my full name. Can we get a, and, and which is, I mean, if, if it's not a personal question. Carol Cooperstein. 
Carol Cooperstein. You were yes. pre before you're Miss Carol Cooperstein prior to being. Yes, I'm going to hyphenate it. Carol Cooperstein clause. If oh. if if we work it out. Oh. I mean, it, it sounds like you're on a break, but it it it, it feels a little dicier maybe than, than I was originally assuming. Um, are are there any do you have any demands for Santa Claus? Yes. Yes. We've had a very serious conversation about this. He needs to um, he needs to return home uh, before New Year's. He would go and he would just be gone for, you know, that full week after Christmas. And I was mm -hmm. home cleaning up all that holly and tinsel and cheer. And um, he, he needs to come back. He needs to come back after Christmas. I'm putting my foot down there. He needs to start hanging up those towels. He needs mm -hmm. to make sure that when he finishes the milk in the fridge that he recycles the bottle. Um, no. I'm going to ask, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a big one. Leaving empty bottles in the fridge of milk, cookie crumbs everywhere, cookie crumbs in the bed. Have you ever slept on cookie crumbs? Ugh. Yeah. That's, I've done it for so hundreds of years. Oh, now, now it's time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's time. Well, well, let's talk about you. What, what's the plan now? Now that you're 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 ready to get back out there, I guess it's it's not ideal timing. What with the pandemic and all, but this is very true. Um, I've decided to, um, you know, go on some dating websites uh, like um, Jollies Jollies dot com. Have you heard of jo I, I have a couple followers on Jollies dot com. <laughs> <laughs> they might be watching tonight. I told them about this show and, you know, I, I was hoping they would come on. <laughs> so, hey. no. um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I've been hitting uh, those dating websites. You get some weird mm -hmm. things sometimes, but sometimes you can filter through it. And um, find that that candy cane surprise at the end of the rainbow. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Uh, well, we have a, a, a question from the audience, uh, which is, uh, so, uh, Dr. Fauci recently came out and said that Santa Claus is, uh, uh, immune to COVID. Uh, are, are you also uh, immune? The Christmas magic, Ryan, is what, what does mm -hmm. it. It's the Christmas magic, um, that we shroud all over the people. Well, at least over Santa. Um, he's a little selfish there. He decided oh. to keep all of that for himself, and he decided to share none of that COVID protection with me, that immunity. And that was another reason that I'm just feeling like, mm. but um, he is safe. He is safe to enter homes, and he he also will be wearing a face mask that I I, I made for him my, myself, and hopefully mm. he's thinking of me when he's kissing the mommies under the, the you know, the mistletoe that night, flying oh, all around yeah. for New Year's. Hopefully he's leaving his mask on. Or maybe, hopefully he's just not kissing anyone. Yeah, social distance, Santa. Six feet, please. Even not during COVID, he should adhere to those, uh, those, those marriage guidelines, right? Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, uh, we, we have another question, um, you know, so, uh, uh, the song Santa baby, where, uh, a woman is asking for, uh, uh, gifts from Santa and, you know, for, uh, in, for favors, we'll say, um, do you also have that kind of pull where, you know, if you meet the, the right person, you could, uh, scoot them over to the, uh, the nice list? Oh, oh, nice list. You, oh, oh, yeah. I. Oh, you're asking about the nice list. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you, yeah, if you meet the right person, that. if I met the right person, could I scoot them over? Is mm -hmm. that, that okay? Yeah. Um, I feel like I could do that. About 15 years ago, Santa streamlined all of his um, list onto apps. No. And um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's he's much faster, and I know how to access those lists, Ryan. Ooh. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, if any, so if anyone anyone's out there is uh, uh, considering looking at your profile, that would be that would be a perk. Yes, yes, absolutely. I can scoot you over to the nice list. And if you're naughty, you're on the naughty list, and you're probably already there anyhow. But <laughs> I can I could definitely. I can definitely get into that if you need any connections there, Ryan. I can do that. Oh, oh, for me? No, I, I mean, look, I, you know, I, uh, I, I am, I, I am married. Uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I know you're trying to kiss oh, okay. daddies under the mistletoe. I'm not, I'm not gonna. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't, oh, okay. my wife. Oh, sorry. My wife's oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. All right. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to step over that tinsel yeah. line there right, right. I, mean, I yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't i mean unless unless you know that my wife was kissing santa claus under the mistletoe or something you know that would be oh, oh. wait Hold on. i have a list here wait what Ooh. i have a list i remember how of i have everyone... access yeah i also have santa's little black book by the way, so I can access oh. that. Let me. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see. Barlow, 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 Karen Barlow, Janine Barlow, Jared Barlow. I didn't know. J Jess Barlow. Oh, uh, is it is it Jessica T Barlow? Maybe it might, maybe oh. it's a no 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 Jessica B Barlow. Okay, I think I think we're okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, so we okay. don't have to. Okay. So um, you know, we're 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 just about out of time. But is there any um, any uh, final uh, uh, final messages you have for for the people out there who uh, you know? Are, are are worried about Christmas and, and you want to make sure that, that that they they know that this is this is about you. It's not it's not going to interfere with Christmas. Boys and girls and men and women out there and people of no gender. I want that. This is for you. You need to know that Santa, even though he is a dog and he deserves to be locked in a basement. He will still come through Christmas Eve for you. You leave out those milk and cookies. You make sure that your stockings are hung and that your fireplace is open. Maybe start a fire under it for, for me, for me, for when Santa comes down. But Santa will still come through. <sighs> <laughs> well, uh, Mrs. Uh, Carol Cooperstein Claus, thank you so much for being here. Doesn't that have a ring to it? I just love it. I, I it's, it's time. It's time. I'm it's time. It's, I love it. I, it's perfect. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And um, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate this opportunity, Ryan. Of course. <laughs> People of Interest is supported by Cameo. This holiday season, you could personally tell your family how much you love them, or you could pay disgraced former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich $80 to do it for you. I think the answer is pretty obvious. Still looking to find that perfect gift for the one you love this holiday season? Well, why not give the most personal gift of all, a part of your body? At least that's the idea behind my next guest, Josephine Murray's revolutionary new startup, A Piece of My Heart. Just, in, just send in a part of your body to the company and within five to 10 business days, your perfectly preserved body part will arrive beautifully, beautifully wrapped at the intended doorstep. You can send a finger, part of your liver, a kidney, bone marrow, anything you can think of and have it turned into a beautiful paperweight or some elegant jewelry. And the best part is, these body parts will be safely preserved, so if you ever need them again, you can ask for your gift back and pop them right into your body. Although there is a caveat that it's sometimes difficult to reattach certain body parts. Murray joins us here this evening, not just to espouse the virtues of her company, but also to allay fears that your body part could become contaminated with the coronavirus. Josephine Murray, welcome. 
Well, hello. Thank you for having me here tonight. This is such a joy. I could pop a piece of my heart out right now to show you how much I am in love with your show. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I mean, when I first heard about this business, I just, it, it, it really blew my mind. I, I would never would have thought of something like this. Where did you, where did you get the idea? It's, it's quite avant-garde. I, I admit that, but you know, I come from a long line of blood donors uh, every every year, uh, every month, some of us, uh, we go, you know, they say it's well, wait, 90 days, but my great uncle Abraham was like, no way, I'm going to go whenever the F I please. Um, he, he was quite a character. He was lovely. I miss him dearly. Um, but, you know, I, I thought, you know, if we get so much joy from uh, giving of ourselves in such a way, so then... Uh, why not give that gift to other people? You know, you can donate kidneys. Why not gift them <laughs> or gift uh, a lock of hair? You know, that was that was a typical thing in Victorian times. I think they called them uh, memento mori's. Do I, if I remember, I forget my business pitches from when I first launched this. But it's it's a time honored thing, you know, and. The American people have such a fascination with sending body parts in, from like gangster movies and stuff like that. Why not send the person you're crushing on the tip of your pinky? I, you know, just as if to say there's a tiny little pinky part of me that is thinking of you right now. I don't know. I don't know. You come up, you come up with the cute slogans. And we we gift wrap it very nicely. That's part of that's part of what you pay for. Uh, what well, it, it sounds amazing. Um, what what are some of the most popular body parts that uh, that um, get mailed? Uh, well, I have to say, uh, uh, hair is probably the most popular. I think, but that's for the people who are just just trying it out. But mm -hmm. our repeat customers, believe it or not a portion of the big toe that's very popular and you would think people would say i need this for the balance but when it's when it's a gift to someone that they just want to say i care about you so deeply it throws me off balance it's just perfect it's just perfect you know and then of course um spine vertebras are very popular you don't need them all we fuse them anyway all the time you just don't so why not give one to that special someone? Um, I've had people give little pieces of skin. Oh, I would say the cutest one. Don't know if this is the most popular, but the cutest one was a young woman who got a tattoo for her mom. And then we took the tattoo, the skin it was on, off, preserved it, and sent it to her mother. It was... I get... I just get... I get a little teary. I mean, it was just so, it was just so lovely. That, that is, uh, that is, that is something else. I, I gotta tell you, it's uh, very surprising. Um, so, so what are some of the ways that you display, you know, I, I know you mentioned jewelry, paperweights. What, what are some of the other ways that you can kind of festively display or, uh, when, when you're sending yeah. it? Yes, jewelry is very popular. Paperworks are very popular. Um, we also offer these display cases, you know, very similar to if you were to preserve a wedding bouquet or like the wedding gown. We have these nice vacuum sealed display cases. Um, we've had some people make things into trophies, you know, awards. Um, uh what else? I'm trying to think. Oh, one very creative customer um took uh, again, this was another skin skin gift. Uh, uh, it was uh, put into a painting. They had like a, a a family portrait, and it needed some restoration work. So they're like, "Why don't we just use this? This seems very nice." And I thought, "Well, that's so creative. That's that's a picture of your mother there, but your skin is the one that's like." her and, and it was like there's a piece of them jigsaw puzzles we've turned bones into jigsaw puzzles that was fun the kids really like that one oh another fun kid gift um you know those 
those those block you know you the kids try to put the little the little the shapes in the correct yes. yeah we do that with bones uh we harden cartilage we do that too um ears make really great keychains um you that's they just do and then we and then we 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 put the little music boxes in them and you wouldn't think the music would come out of the ear oh. you'd think it would come out of the tongue or right. something but people don't want people don't want the music to come out of the tongues like it's talking for some reason that that freaks them out that freaks that's right. too much the sure. ear you know the the thing you would hear the music with that is very comforting to people for some reason i don't know um we uh yes what else i clothing clothing hats beanies oh. beanies are very popular uh tote bags of course tote bags uh sure. yeah I mean, you think of it. We we have a list. We have a list of of products, um, and our most popular, some of which I've listed. But honestly, we're willing to work with you if you have a creative idea. We are. We'll put our designers and our artists to work to make that idea come to life for you. That that I mean, I mean, what what a business model. I mean, you know, I, people must be just lining up. I mean, you must have they you are. know. They are, we, we just opened another investment option for our uh, stockholders. That was exciting. Um, wow. We offered a free, uh, a free gift to them, a body part made into a musical instrument of your choice. We recommend yeah. a piece of your large or small intestine. That's the most conducive, but we'll do it with anything. Um, and yeah, we are opening up. Well, okay, so we were planning. Uh, it was an all online business. And right mm -hmm. before COVID, we were like, oh, we want some brick and mortar stores. We want people to to play and walk through, kind of like a Sephora, but with the objects that we've made, you know, things right. things people didn't like and sent back. We have, we, we have like, we have some of those. Every once in a while, someone receiving it is just like, I'm not sure what to do with this. So they send it back and we give everyone involved a refund. Um, and sometimes we put it back but sometimes the person is like, no, it's fine. They didn't like it. I don't want it back. It hurts too much. They didn't, they didn't like my gift. It's very rare. It's oh. very rare. So we thought, well, why don't we take all of these things uh, that we kind of just had sitting around, you know, and, and put them in a brick and mortar store and people can touch them and play with them. And, you know, and sadly we've had to put that on the back burner, but hopefully we'll, we'll get through, we'll get through. Um, I will say business is continuing to be very good. Um, and it all looks hopeful. It looks very hopeful. Yes. Uh, so, so I did. I did have a question. Uh, was, is there is there any organ or or body part that you that you you guys won't touch? I mean, it, it sounds like you know it's sort of the sky's the limit. But you know, I would imagine like a full human heart or a brain or something. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll take a piece of just about anything, uh, and the mm -hmm. the size depends. Uh, uh, like we could take a whole kidney. Obviously, you only need one. Uh, we could, we, but we can only take a tiny piece of your heart. We can't. We had one person wanted one whole ventricle, and we had to say, uh, "Sweetheart, no, you, no, no. We'll, we'll take an artery, maybe. Well, we, our doctors are very good at bypassing that, but you need all four of the ventricles. You, I mean, we'll do it if you pay us. And no, we won't really do it. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yes, uh, no, uh, um. Yeah, I, we've had about everything. Uh, our, our, the entire spinal column, the brain stem, you would like to keep that intact. We really don't touch the brain. I will say that. Um, it's, you know, it could be done. It could be done. But we just, it, oh, the insurance is very pricey to be able to put piece apart the brain. And I didn't really want to mess with that. So I will say uh, we had one very wealthy investor who we were entertaining the idea. Um, he wanted to take a piece of his brain and um, put it in one of those, you know, the little um, magnetic things that sit on your desk with the balls oh, well, that they yeah. keep going. Yeah, those. He wanted he wanted each of the balls to be a piece of his preserved brain, and um, oh. I think it was just a display in his office. I don't know. I, I thought it was very weird. I thought you want to take a piece of your brain, give it to one of your kids, make something fun, artistic. Mm -hmm. Those things. Anyway, anyway, uh, it was decided that the you know the insurance, the risk. Uh, we managed to talk him into using some cartilage from various joints, you know, mm. and then I think he also took a teeny tiny piece of his stomach. 
Oh, sure, sure. Maybe he thinks with his stomach sometimes. I think that was it. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're running out of time, but uh, I, I've heard you have some pretty great deals for the holiday. And I wonder if you wanted to if you wanted to just pitch them before before you uh, head out. We do. Um, we've got two, two toes for one, uh, two Ooh. toes for one deal. Uh, you don't have to make them into the same thing. But that's for the price of one toe. You get two. Um, we've also got paired kidney deals. You and a friend, you both you both want to gift the kidney. Uh, then you can do that. That's also for the price of one. Uh, so that's the paired. That's the paired gifting. Uh, and then uh, I think I think that might. Oh no 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 no. We have one more. It's called uh, the bright, the brightest eye. The brightest eye deal where uh, we, d we do have some people take one eye. I, mostly we just work with the corneas or piece oh. of the eyelid. But it's a severe discount if you want to give someone the entire eye. Severe. And we can make those into fun little ornaments with a Christmas tree or into like a light that you actually, you know, put on your little Christmas, Christmas lights. Severe deep discount. 50% off with that one. Wow. wow. I guess that one, you, that one price to move. Price to move, yes. Well, uh, I, I got to say, this this business sounds just just phenomenal, and uh, I wish you I wish you all the best, uh, you know, uh, with, with everything. So, uh, Josephine Murray, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. Kohl's Supermarkets supports people of interest. Never heard of Kohl's? They're a big supermarket chain in Australia. Wondering why an Australian supermarket chain is supporting this American show? It's because this is an international show. We consistently have at least one viewer from Australia, and they like to buy things too, you know. For centuries, the ghost of Christmas yet to come has silently haunted the greedy, the selfish, and the downright cruel to expose the errors of their ways. Well, those centuries of silence end tonight. Forgoing his traditional cow, the ghost of Christmas yet to come has joined us here tonight to speak his mind for the first time in centuries and to promote his new memoir, All I Did Was Point Menacingly, The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come Story. This memoir provides a no holds barred account of the ghost of, ghost of Christmas yet to come's life, tracing his ups and downs, successes and failures, and finally telling his side of the story regarding the contentious relationship he has with the ghost of Christmas present. As an added treat for the audience, the ghost of Christmas yet to come will be answering any questions you have about future Christmases, provided you are a rich asshole. Ghost of Christmas yet to come, welcome. Well, well, well. Thank you for having me on your show. I am honored. I, I mean, I'm honored. You know, you don't you don't make a lot of public appearances, and you certainly don't do any speaking engagements. So uh, I just I, I have to say it's a, it's a it's a real honor. Uh, all, all all on this my side uh, of the therapist said I should be a little more forthcoming. Uh and, and, you know, now's the time. So what, what prompted you to say, you know what, it's, it's time to tell my story? Well, as I said, my therapist has been pushing me in this direction. You'll notice instead of carrying a scythe and wearing a dark cloak, um, I am wearing a festive shirt. Be very festive. These indeed. are limes. Oh, in the Lines style for... of Margaritaville, perhaps. Mm. Very, very, that's very festive. Um, Thank you. I'm trying. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it's 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 just great to it's just great to hear you talk. It's great to hear your side of the story. You know, uh, reading through your your memoir, um, I have yes feelings that I'm supposed to be expressing, and my therapist thought it would be a good thing to try to express them. And um, that's why I've agreed to go on your show. So thank you, thank you. Uh, so what are some? Uh, I mean, uh, there's so many just amazing uh, uh, stories, you know, in, in your book. Obviously, 
sort of the the story of Scrooge was obviously the one everyone knows, but uh, uh, Bill Gates, I, I had no idea that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was was all you. Oh yes, that would have been. Oh geez, not that long ago, nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety one, the years. You know, just kind of it's when you're timeless something that's only 10 or 20 years away it's like a very thin layer like like the skin on top of jello so you take the spoon and you drop it on the jello and it just kind of makes a little dent that dent is say a year or two so when it was in the 90s i don't know but i showed him a vision and uh he paid heed and uh, the foundation was one of the uh, better things that came out of that. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people, especially, you know, in the 90s and, you know, they thought, you know, oh, here's this, you know, he's one of the first, you know, ultra billionaires or, or whatever it is. And you'd think he was just going to kind of carry that around with him. But uh, yeah, one day. Bill yeah, I'm Gates also time. responsible for him getting rid of Clippy. Really? Uh, I, I, I thank you, <laughs> Could, you know, right. Do it. Yeah. Um, uh, Warren Buffett, obviously another huge example of someone who, uh, saw, yes. saw the error of his, uh, avariceness. Um, uh, but the, the failures too, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of dwell on anything too negative, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Oh Bezos. no, it's, it, it is, everyone has a choice. I show them the future, I show them what could be, and they decide what path they're going to take. Was there anyone that you've, you've, you've worked with where, you know, you, you could, you're, you're watching them go through the, the future and you're like, you are not, you're not getting this. Like the way that you're looking at this really needs to. Matt Dillon. Really? Yeah, it took a couple years of visiting Matt Dillon um, before I got him making appropriate choices. Um, but one doesn't see him much anymore, so one can only do so much. Right. And maybe it's for the Actually, way. most of the cast of The Outsiders I visited in one form or the other. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a, a lot of heavy hitters. Well, agents come to me, you see, and they, they want me to talk sense into their clients. Um, I'll do it for the extra money. I, I, I don't, I don't t listen to what they say to say. I just listen to them and they say, go speak to this person and I will do that. And then I will follow what I know needs to happen based on how I view their future. There was right. a future, there was a future in which Matt Dillon was Senator of Wisconsin. It did not go well. Um, oh. I showed him that. He agreed it did not go well. Uh, and instead he, uh, he went on to do more movies. Oh, wow. That's, yes. uh, that's crazy. Um, uh, do you like cheese? Uh, yeah. I can I, 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 I can I I can see a future where there is an abundance of cheese for you. Oh. Does it depend on what the next question I ask is? No, no, no. It just depends on certain things. Uh, I think uh, the next time you walk by that bodega on 18th Street you like, go in and buy a lottery ticket. Oh. Uh, and will this be on Christmas Day? Because I, I know you can only see the specifically the Christmases. Yes, yes. I, I can't tell you which year though. So every Christmas you must do this. Ah, okay. I'll but keep only that if in mind. you like cheese. Yes. Okay. I will. I do well. I'll, I'll decide that later. So. Uh, obviously, you you work in tandem with the the Ghost of Christmas Past and the Ghost of Christmas Present. Um, I know that you and the Ghost of Christmas Present. There, there's been some antagonism, you know, a lot of it, you know, for so many years. The Ghost of Christmas Present was just telling his side of the story, and and you know, you've exposed a lot. 
it, it, it's really that's one of the things that I've worked through with my therapist. Uh, he he's gotten the bulk of the publicity. Uh, he's certainly more glib. He has a way with words. Uh, as you have pointed out, I mostly point. Um, I, I will admit it's uh, very uncomfortable comfortable just exposing myself like this i would almost much rather go over there and put on my headgear uh you're being very brave you know i, I really appreciate what you're doing um now one of the things that i did have a question about is you, you only really mentioned the ghost of christmas past a few times you know i i guess that the handoff doesn't really happen in passing you know. <laughs> right <laughs> So, so, you know, what is that relationship like? I mean, do you guys really get to interact at all? Or is it you kind of have that ghost of Christmas presence always seems to be the middleman? Well, it's one of those relationships, you know, where mostly it's done while playing words with friends. You play a thing, you put a little note in the message. We have that kind of relationship. He also does not like the ghost of Christmas present. Oh. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, uh, I, I I know a couple of people in the audiences are, are sort of uh, aghast that the uh, ghost of Christmas present is not the jolly, you know, jovial soul that, that he's, you know, so frequently portrayed as. He's, it's, it, it, it's all an act. Um, will you excuse me for just one minute? Not even sure. one minute, for just 10 seconds, I will be in frame. Stay right there. I would feel much more comfortable if I could mask up. Uh, sure. Um, it's quite the, the plague mask. Work? Yeah, it I, is can, I can hear mask. you. It's fine. Good. Uh, um, I realize it's a plague mask, but I'm not used to showing myself. Sure. Uh, you know, and I know that you're trying to kind of get away from the hood. So if this is that next step, I, I, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, I'm, I am friends with the plague doctor. He um, gives yeah. me some of his cast-offs. Uh, are, are you worried that they're, well, I guess you don't have to worry if they're, they're plagued or not since you're a ghost. I am a ghost. Uh, I so, did not die you know, of a plague, however. Oh. Uh, a rock how, how fell did... on me. Mm. A rock fell on me, Yes. That, that's that's rough. It is. Um, but I was given this wonderful opportunity. I go around and I really think I am making the world a better place. And I am told that when I have finally achieved that goal, I can retire. Oh. Uh, would, do you see yourself but the ghost of that? Christmas... The ghost of Christmas present, you see, is conspiring against me. And so I'm trapped in the cycle of doing good, of trying to make a difference. And then he angers me, and sometimes I lash out and bad things happen. Oh. Uh, what would be a, a bad thing that, that happened? Um, well, for example, uh, in your fair city of Philadelphia, I might have been responsible them for them having taken away the, uh, the, 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 the rail cars uh, on the 23 line. It's now a bus. Oh. It used to be yeah. a rail car. Yeah, and I, I sadly I, had a hand in that. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's rough. Um, so we're, we're getting a lot of uh, audience feedback and every, everyone wants to know, and I'm sure you're, you're probably sick of hearing it at this point, but a lot of people are, are saying, you know, did you visit President Trump? You know, did you, you know, could you have tried harder? You know, what, what happened there? Well, I'm going to take my mask off so I can speak to you frankly. It doesn't work because he never sleeps. Oh, I can't visit people unless they sleep. And then I come to them in a vision and they awake. Right. At the stroke of three. He, he, yes. 
He'll take little cat naps here and there, but if you're not in the right place at the right time, you're going to miss it. Right. Because it's Christmas and you got to get that sweet spot. Do, do you have... Uh, he's he's, do, he's do up have... tweeting. He's yes. up tweeting at all hours of the night. It's impossible to visit. Do, do you have a plan if you could ever get him, you know, alone for a, for a, a second to uh, uh, show him his future? History has told me that some people are impervious to the influences of the fates. They just can't, they just can't, they can't see the paths laid before them and they act against what seems to be a common judgment. Some people are unreachable. And I know the ghost of Christmas present would tell you otherwise, but he's a liar. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're just about running out of time, but I, I was wondering if you, if you had any sort of uh, final messages for everyone uh, to, uh, you know, keep Christmas uh, the year round and, and respect their, uh, their fellow uh, humans. I, I, I do. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I think it's important for people to look within. And if they don't have the answers within, Look without. Do as I have done. Seek out therapy. I have found it very fruitful. I have stopped scaring people. I have found a way to enter their room in the night through their dreams so that when they wake up, they know that I'm there and they're not scared. Because when you act from fear, you make bad choices. There's no point in showing them the future of what might be if they're afraid because there's this ghost telling them about the future right? But if I Mm. insinuate myself in a dream, make them feel at ease, and then show them all the terrible things that will happen, they are more, 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 more likely to take action. And isn't that what we want people taking action towards a better path? Yes, yes, it is. And just, I think I'm, I think I'm more filled with the Christmas spirit right now. And I'm going to keep it the year. Good. Yes. I see a future full of cheese for you, my friend. All right. I, uh, I hope I hope it's like a, a sharp, maybe a nice cheddar. Or a, not soft. I'm not like a soft cheese guy. So hopefully it's it's more like the hard cheeses, maybe like a Parmesan. Yeah, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I have to, I'll just make sure that I'm heading to that bodega on on uh, Christmas Christmas Day on 18th uh, Street. On 18th Street. So. Uh, Ghost of Christmas yet to come. Thank you so much for being here. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to plug my memoir. And I hope to be visiting you in your dreams soon. And the dreams of all of your followers. Well, I look forward to it. And I'm sure they all do as well. I hope so. Everybody, that was the show. Thank you so much for uh, coming to it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And let's let's have a round of applause for for all of our our great performers. Let's bring them out. <laughs> and that that is that was we turned on all the microphones of all of the of all the audience members. So that's 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 live. It's not a canned uh, uh, applause. So um, thank you guys for being here. And uh, I'm going to give everybody a moment to uh, tell us uh, if there's anything they'd like to promote. Or uh, So, Sue, uh, what's going on? Oh, okay. Hello. Um, I asked around, and there's not a ton going on, but I do have to say there is a movie, a horror movie coming out, written by Justin Miller, who is a Philly comic and writer um and there's a bunch of philadelphia comedy actors in it um the movie is called sleep walk kill it's directed by justin miller Uh, it's starring samantha russell and bill reddick i think is the right way to say that bill reddick right reddick yeah i did it okay bill reddick and uh my husband zach use up this is in it for a short little bit and um that's that's it. It should be out by the summertime, I believe. And uh, keep keep an eye out for that movie by Justin Miller and all the Philly people. <laughs> all right. Uh, Amanda? 
Um, yeah, two things real quick. Um, I was a guest co-host on my friend Luigi's podcast called Robots versus Dinosaurs, uh, where they discuss a new movie either about robots or dinosaurs. They have to be about one of them either. And kind of the whole podcast is a series of determining which one everyone likes better. And I chose Star Trek Generation. So that dropped today. Go find that wherever you like to listen to your podcasts, Robots versus Dinosaurs. And uh, as per you may have guessed or didn't guessed by my character suggestion, I am in real life a living kidney donor. Uh, I have a solo show. I'm not currently doing it because of COVID. But if you might be hiring an interesting guest speaker for whatever event you are doing, corporate or otherwise, you can find more information about me and my story of donation at imjustkidneying.com. Thank you. It's true. That's where the character came from. <laughs> All right, Steve. <laughs> Yes, um, I don't have anything to um, to to to, to uh, pitch, so um, I will thereby not dilute the pitches that came before us. So go do those things. All right, and uh, Neil's frozen, so he probably left. But uh, Neil and I actually have a show <laughs> on Sunday uh, that Amanda does tech for, and oh. she's brilliant. Uh, it's That's called it. My Dinner yeah. with Ryan. It, it's a whole thing. If you look for if you if you search for me and and my dinner uh, with and we have a fun dinner party show it's it's a lot of fun and it's it's a uh, it's on Facebook and YouTube uh, thanks to Frigid New York for for putting that together which is Amanda's affiliated with uh, thanks again everybody you did great <laughs> thank you thank you all right everyone uh, thanks again for being here and thank you to Cat Communications who. Uh, does this beautiful display for us and and makes everything look good and sound good and you like you have no idea how much testing we do around everyone's uh, internet connection so let's uh, is the logo are we, there it is there's the logo so hire them for your uh, your presentation needs because uh, it, it's worth it just take a look so thank you again for being here for people of interest I'm Ryan T Barlow and I ask all of you to stay interesting and have a happy holiday good night. Thank you.